What's up everybody? My name is Ryan. I'm a CPA. Today I wanted to briefly talk about the section 179 deduction again. I know I have a video on it already and I've been getting a lot of comments and emails from that video and I've been seeing you know this being talked about all over the internet about how you can use the section 179 deduction to your advantage and yeah I just wanted to give a brief update or like kind of a retouch on maybe why it's a good idea why it's a bad idea. If you're not familiar with the Section 179 deduction, it allows you to depreciate certain assets fully in the first year that you purchase it. And this is obviously for business owners only. So uh, if you have a business, let's say you wanted to buy some piece of equipment, usually you depreciate it over like seven years, you know, the cost of the equipment. But with Section 179, it gives you uh, the ability to take the deduction in the first year of purchase, the entire cost of the equipment. Now, this is different from bonus depreciation, which I think is really also also really useful, uh, especially during 2020 and 2021, as you get to take 100% bonus depreciation. It's a much better depreciation than than the Section 179, in my opinion. Um, but you know, the, the the strength of the bonus depreciation will be phased down moving forward. So that's why I'm talking about this today. All right. So the first thing to note is. Uh, if you're going to start a business just to buy a car for your business so you can write it off, that is a terrible idea. And that's a terrible idea because A, uh, you need some revenue in your business to justify this. Um, and then two, if you buy a car and you have zero revenue, Session 179 actually can't create a negative income. So it can't create a loss. So, you, so if you have a business that has zero revenue, you buy a $20,000 car and you section 179 it, you, you won't have negative $20,000 of loss to offset against your other income. You just have zero. You know, that $20,000 loss will get carried to the following year until you can use it up. The next thing is why that's a bad idea is because if you don't have a legitimate business, then you don't have a business. Creating one just for the deduct deduction is illegal and it's tax fraud. I mean, you're just trying to skirt paying taxes that way and that is just not legal. So I wouldn't do that either. That's gonna come back eventually. The IRS does prioritize those kinds of audits where you have multiple years of no revenue and uh, expenses through, through those years, you know, trying to create a negative income or a loss. So I'm gonna continue on talking about cars because you know, cars seem to be a, a popular topic in the Section 179 world. Um, with cars, you have to buy a car that weighs over 6,000 pounds in order to qualify for the full deduction of the full cost. You know, otherwise vehicles are limited by their deduction. So there's lots of talk about like big trucks, fancy SUVs, like G wagons, uh, Raptors, you know, these big expensive trucks, you know, Rolls Royce cars, all these cars that weigh over 6,000 pounds and purchasing them for your business. Now, if you have a legitimate business, you know, and, you, and it's been established, you have a legitimate business and you want to get a car for your business, that's fine. And sometimes businesses have legitimate uses for cars. But uh, I would be very weary of justifying purchasing like a $150,000 G-Wagon or a $300,000 Rolls Royce as a business expense for your business. Uh, let's say you have a marketing company or a baking company, a cookie shop, uh, an accounting firm. Could you really justify buying that expensive a car for your business. Okay. I, my, in my opinion, the way that I would advise my clients is I would not justify that. I mean, that's ultimately their decision, their final decision. I can tell them what I think, uh, but that's not something that I think would be justified. And if they were to get audited, I would guess that the IRS would disallow some of that deduction because, uh, it's not, ordinary or necessary to buy a $150,000 or $300,000 car for your business. So be careful when buying cars for your business just for the 179 deduction for that reason alone. And some people might say, oh, but what if I put my business's logo on it? It's like 24 seven advertising. Uh, yeah, you bought a G-Wagon to do that. Why couldn't you do that with like a Toyota RAV4, you know, or a Toyota 4Runner? You know, you, you, you had to go buy the much more expensive car to do that. That's, uh, that's why, you know, knowing how the IRS examination and audit process works, 
that's why I'm really, really skeptical of people trying to do that with these luxury exotic cars for the business. The other thing that you have to be aware of is when you section 179 a vehicle or any asset, you know, you're taking full depreciation in the first year, that means your book value of that asset is zero. So if you go and sell the assets or the vehicle down the road in a few years, you're gonna have to pay depreciation recapture tax on that sale. So for an example, let's say you buy a car, a legitimate car, legitimate business use, $50,000, you section 179 it, so you take the $50,000 deduction the first year, okay? The next year, you go to sell it, okay? You sell it for $40,000. Now you might think, oh, I have a $10,000 loss, you know, because you bought it for 50 and you sold it for 40. No, really you have a $40,000 gain. Uh, un it's it's gonna be depreciation recapture uh, tax on the $40,000 because when you depreciated that, that vehicle down to zero, the value down to zero, because you took the full depreciation, now your book value is zero. Your basis is zero. So when you sell it for 40,000, you have that depreciation recapture of $40,000, okay? If you depreciate it normally, let's say $10,000 per year over five years, after the first year, your book value would be at $40,000 because you only depreciated $10,000. So, and then you sold it the following year, okay? You sold the following year for $40,000, then you have a net gain of zero and, and zero depreciation recapture. So something to keep in mind, I don't see get talked about nearly enough. The last thing I want to talk about for vehicles is business use. So uh, in order to qualify at all for any Section 179 depreciation for a vehicle, you have to use it at least 50% for business. If you don't use it 50% for business, then it's actually a personal vehicle and you can't get any deduction for it, all right? So let's say you use it at least 50% for business. Actually, for, for this purpose, let's say you use it 50% for business. You know, you, some of it you use for getting groceries, picking up your kids, and then half the other time you use it to, to drive around and meet your clients and take them to lunch and all that stuff. That doesn't mean you get to take 100% of the Section 179 deduction. That means you get to take 50% of it. So, in the example of a $50,000 car, use it 50% for business, you are legally allowed to take a Section 179 deduction of $25,000. Not 50, because you're using it 50% for business and trying to take any more of a deduction than your business use would be illegal and tax fraud. So, you know, and this matters for any percentage between 50 and 100%. Obviously, if you use it 100% for business, then you are entitled to the full deduction. So another complication that definitely I would watch out for if you're planning on, do it, if you're planning on doing this. And that's why with vehicles, I think it is my opinion that it's much simpler to take the mileage deduction, you know, rather than the depreciation in actual expenses. Because with mileage, you just track your mileage, your business mileage versus your personal mileage. You take the IRS mileage rates, multiply it by your business mileage, and that's your deduction. If you're a sole proprietor, that's fairly easy to do on your 1040. If you're a corporation or a partnership, you just have to set up a reimbursement plan to reimburse you for the mileage. Uh, if you're taking actual expenses, you're still going to have to take, you're still going to have to track mileage because you're, you're going to need to differentiate between business mileage and personal mileage. And, you know, all your expenses will be based on that ratio. You know, 70% you use for business, then you can deduct 70% of your gas and your insurance and your depreciation and all that stuff. But you still have to track mileage. The other thing with depreciation, you know, after the first year, after, if you section 179 your car fully, after that first year, you have no more large deductions for your car, you know, because you took it all in the first year. Uh, whereas with mileage, you can take the mileage deduction year over year. Um, this makes sense more for people who drive a lot for businesses, you know, like realtors, potentially mortgage brokers, um, people who deliver stuff. Uh, if you drive a lot for business, mileage deduction definitely makes more sense. Now that's obviously if you purchase your car personally, if you purchase it under the business, then it's assumed that you're gonna use it 100% for business, okay? 
that's the assumption and that's the assumption that you have to act on because if you don't excuse my cat because if you don't then you're gonna have to basically report personal use income yeah that's actually a thing if you buy a car under your business like it's titled to your business if you financed it it's financed under your business it's legitimately under your business and it's assumed that you can take the full depreciation you can take 100 percent of the gas deductions and insurance and all that stuff let's assume that and then let's say you know once a weekend you use it to go take your kid to the park and then um to the park and come back home let's say that's like 10 miles each weekend uh, so you have 520 miles of personal use well technically that 520 miles should be reported back to you as personal income for personal use of a business vehicle something that really keep in mind when you are uh, purchasing a vehicle so thanks for listening my name is Ryan be sure to smash the like button please uh, consider subscribing obviously and take care for now and I'll see you next time